All right, 6.3, exploring graphs of the primary trigonometric functions. So we're going to recap from grade 11 the key points for the sine theta graph. In grade 11, we dealt with angles from 0 to 360 degrees. In grade 12, we deal with theta between 0 and 2 pi. So how do these two relate? The basic coordinates in grade 11 were 0 and sine theta. In grade 12, I mean, sorry, not 0, but theta and sine theta, so your x value and your y value. In grade 12, it's the same values. Now, let's re recap what we did in grade 11. Grade 11 was 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And these were the corresponding y coordinates. So what does this tell us? Well, folks, what we're seeing here is now we need to take these five coordinates and convert them to radian measure. So 0, 0 will obviously stay 0, 0. 91 will become pi over 2 and 1. 180, 0 will become pi 0. 270 and negative 1 will become 3 pi over 2 and negative 1, and then 360 will become 2 pi and 0. The period of the sine function is 2 pi. The equation of the axis is y equals 0. The amplitude is 1, and the max value is 1, and the min value that you reach is negative 1. The domain is as follows. Theta belongs to real, and the range is y belongs to real such that y f goes from negative 1 all the way up to 1. So, looking at this, we also are going to look at the actual graph. And this is what our graph looks like in terms of, um, in radian measure. So these are our five points. And when you connect them, you connect them in a very smooth and rounded curve. So let's figure out some of the other values that go in here. Let's figure out sine pi over 6. What answer does the book does a calculator give you? Well, sine pi over 6 is the same as sine 30, and sine 30 is equal to a half. So we're going to see that value in a minute. We're also going to look at pi over 3. And we're going to label each one of these the scale in terms of pi over 3 and pi over 6. So let's go over each one. So I'm going to show this again to you. So each one of these, looking down here on the bottom, this is divided into one-sixth pi. This is one-sixth of a pi, two-sixths, which reduced is pi over three. This is three-sixths pi, which was reduced to pi over two. Four-sixths pi is four, two pi over three. Five-sixths pi is reduced. And then six-sixths is pi, and so on. So we go all the way up to two pi. The reason we're doing that is we're actually going to find values that go in here so we can understand how this graph is drawn. So pi over 6, I'm going to plug that value in and I get a half. This point will have a matching point on this side right here. Then this point will also have a matching point on the negative side which would be right here. This point will have a matching point over here on this side and there you go, all the halves are matched. Now pi over 3, we need to find out. Pi over 3 is going to be 0 0.87 or so. So the point is about here. This point has a matching point over here. And if you look carefully down over here, there probably will be, and there will be a matching point for each of these. And you can plug these into the calculator using sine and these values in degrees if you're using degree mode. And what you'll have is a nice smooth rounded curve and very important to note let's go back it's a smooth rounded curve no pointy curves no weird bumpy things no strange uh, straight lines it really has to be a smooth rounded curve so the idea that it takes on this smooth roundedness and it is not something that looks pointy, so you're not going to see something along these lines. Let me just draw you one. 
These are the types of graphs I've seen, just so that you understand. They do not look like this. You draw me this green graph and I guarantee I will deduct marks from you. Please do not draw that green graph. The other thing is, please make sure that you don't really draw a very narrow graph. So for example, let's look at a narrow one. It's not going to look like this. Please don't draw me something like that. I don't want it looking like a straight line, folks. Nice, smooth, rounded wave. All right, key points for cosine theta. So again, we have it for grade 11. Here are the coordinates. Here we go. Grade 12, convert the coordinates to radians. Same pi radians that we had for sines. And the cosine y values are corresponding to the cosine graph. So let's talk about the, all the different parts. Period is 2 pi. Equation axis is y equals 0. Amplitude is 1. Max is 1. Min is negative 1. And then your domain and range are as follows, which is the exact same for the sine graph. All right. What does the graph look like? Well, let's draw it. Here we go. And note that each point here, and we're going to have a nice, smooth, rounded curve to create this. It is not a V, folks. So let's find all the different values. Let's put in the actual scale along the bottom, just like we did here. And what we're doing here is finding these values. So what is cosine pi over 6? If you're thinking about the graph we did for sine, we should have 0.87 about here and then 0.5, and then so on, and look at our nice little smooth little graph. Here we go. Don't forget it's rounded, folks. So when we draw, it has to be rounded because think about this wave continuing, and we continue a rounded curve. This continues on forever and ever in both directions. Okay. All right. Keep in mind, don't forget, rounded, smooth curves, folks. Okay? Very, very important. Now, how do we get the graph for y equals tan theta? This is something that's going to be interesting. If you remember anything about, I wonder if you remember anything about tan theta. Well, hopefully you remember that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, which is one of the identities. So if we're looking at it in terms of the graph, tan theta is equal to sine over cos theta. And we've done these type of graphs. This is a rational function graph. So we have the sine theta on top and the cos theta on the bottom. So what do you remember about the bottom? Well, the bottom, all the zeros on the bottom mean that there's going to be a uh, vertical asymptote. All the zeros on the top is where the x axis, where the graph hits the x-axis. So knowing that, we're going to take our sine graph and looking at our sine graph here it is folks okay and then we're going to take our tan uh, cosine graph let's look at that with the table of values and here it is let's draw it out and what we're going to do is use these two to figure out, these two right here, to figure out our tan graph. Are you ready? Let's look at it. So let's look at the table of values. Zero, sorry, theta, tan theta. Let's start with the same value for zero. Zero will yield us a zero. Why? Because the numerator, if you look carefully, okay, if you look carefully, our numerator is zero, is sine. So our numerator is going to look at zero for sine divided by cosine. So zero divided by one, which gives us zero. Then we're also going to look at um, pi over two. Pi over two. Now I'm going to skip a line here because you're going to see what value we're going to look for in between here. Right now, we're going to 0 to pi over 2. Pi over 2, and then it would be 1 div sine divided by cos. So 1 divided by 0. So it's undefined at pi over 2. Next, we're going to look at pi. 
at pi, we get 0 divided by negative 1. Well, that will result in 0 again. Hmm. So we started at 0, we end with 0, and if you keep going looking at this, even at 2 pi, you're going to have 0 divided by 1, so you get 0 again. And 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1 over 0, you'll have, an you'll have it undefined there as well. So, tan, we're going to actually stop at pi. And we're going to find values that go between here. So what is between 0 and pi over 2? Hopefully, you're thinking pi over 4. Because if you remember, tan of pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, is actually 1. Okay? And tan of pi over 4 is 1. What about tan of, what would this be here? That would be 3 pi over 4. If you remember the quadrants, 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, tan is negative, And we'll have a value of negative 1. So, here we have values for tan theta that we can draw the graph. So we're actually going to draw the graph with negative and positive. And note that I'm using a scale of 4 to get to pi and a scale of 4 to get to negative pi. So that we can have negative pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4, pi over 4, and 3 pi over 4. So here's our graph, folks. Okay, so let's go through this slowly. We have this graph, uh, asymptote here, an asymptote here, a 0 at 0, and at pi over 4, we have a value of 1. Sorry, and at pi, we'll have a value of 0 as well. And then at negative pi, we'll have a value of 0. At pi over 4, we have a value of 1. At, pi at, at 3 pi over 4, we'll have a value of negative 1. So if we follow this pattern, it looks like that what we're going to have is a value at negative pi over 4 to be negative 1. 1. And so this yields a graph that we've seen before. This very much so look resembles the cubic function graph. And the same will happen on, on the side there. We'll have it from the zero going in this direction. And over here, imagine what will happen here. Hopefully you're thinking it's going to go upwards in that direction. And that's exactly what happens. So the main part of the graph that we're going to be focusing on is this part right here. So all of this from here across, including the asymptote, so this area. The period of this function, so here are your coordinates. These are the coordinates we're going to focus on to be able to draw the graph. So from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so that we include the asymptote at the beginning and the end. The period is pi, equation of the axis y equals 0, the amplitude is undefined, and there's no max or min. Alright folks, running out of time, let's go on to the next video. See you soon.